Hello everyone. This is Dr. Sultan Moinuddin Shaukat Ali. I welcome you to Ikra Med Academy and today we are here to discuss about ovarian endometriosis. In this session not just endo ovarian endometriosis I shall be taking you through basic pathogenesis of what endometriosis is and what are the various types of endometriosis which can be encountered. At the same time we we'll discuss some important clinical findings in cases of ovarian endometriosis and I would also show you the images of ovarian endometriosis as well as few other uh, endometriosis. So without any delay we would begin. So before we start with I will show you what is the basic pathogenesis of ovarian endometriosis. So you know that this is uterus basics uterus inside the uterus you have got endometrium so here lies the endometrium inside the uterus now this is what is normal which what is expected but sometimes what can happen this endometrium can go to abnormal or unexpected sites. The one which we had discussed in our one of the lecture which was adenomyosis where endometrium goes inside the myometrium. Yes, this is one form of endometriosis. Now this endometrium not just can go in myometrium, it can go anywhere else. It can go along the LSCS scar which is called scar endometriosis. It can go anterior to the uterus along the bladder wall leading to bladder endometriosis. It can go posteriorly into the pouch of Douglas and can cause endometriosis there. Now why is this thing important? Because this endometrial tissue as we had discussed is dynamic. It is dynamic. So this endometrial tissue it would be responding to the hormonal changes in the body. But at the same time, it doesn't have any area to get expelled out. So it cannot be expelled outside. As a result of this, it would get accumulated within the organ where there is endometriosis. So the blood will keep on getting accumulated, accumulated, accumulated. And this will cause excessive inflammation surrounding it. There will be excessive inflammation. So with each menstrual cycle there will be pain, dysmenorrhea, excessive inflammation, there will be fibrosis, adhesions and then the patient might get adhesions, the patient would get might sometimes present with obstruction even, the patient present with dysmenorrhea. Same, one such similar situation is ovarian endometriosis where this endometrium gets lodged inside the ovary inside the ovary so imagine that the endometrium gets lodged inside the ovary once it lodges within the ovary this ovarian endometrium it has no sight it it's it grows and responds to the hormone but it has no sight to get excreted out. As a result, it keeps on accumulating within the ovary. It keeps on accumulating within the ovary. And this accumulation keeps on increasing, increasing, increasing. And all the shed blood keeps on collecting within the ovary. And you know, how does the old blood look? The old blood looks brownish in color. And this looks like chocolate color and hence endometriosis of the ovary is called chocolate cyst. So this was in brief what actually happens in endometriosis. 
in any disease we have tried to cover in brief i have tried to explain you what that pathogenesis is you need to understand this because unless you do not understand the basics why of the thing you won't be able to explain the imaging findings and you won't be able to enjoy the imaging findings of a particular disease now i would brief you with look here look at this image so you can clearly see this this is endometriosis in pouch of douglas so with each cycle it keeps on increasing in size and will cause adhesions between the rectum and will cause dysmenorrhea and deep pelvic pain similarly this is again amount of uh, endometriosis now this these are the various locations where endometriosis can take place which can range from you know it can range from anterior portion of the uterus then the pouch of douglas between the rectum and the vagina then it can be inside the ovary which we have learned just that it leads to formation of what is called as chocolate cyst and it can be even in the periphery distal to it and there is rare but it can happen now this is one such interesting case before we start to ovarian endometriosis this patient presented with repeated pain on menstruation and the pain was at the site of lscs site lscs scar and on ultrasound we could see that this is a linear probe ultrasound and you can clearly see this is the rectus muscle and overlying the rectus muscle you are able to see this lesion so this was a heterogeneously hypoechoic lesion we could make out it was oval showing some vascularity within it and this was there within the uh, subcutaneous tissue overlying the rectus at the level of lscs scar so we did fna out of it and it turned out to be scar endometriosis so there is endometrial tissue within the scar this is one of the common endometriosis which can be encountered now this is an interesting finding this is ultrasound of the ovary and you can see that this is ovary here this is ovary here and you can see that there is content within the ovary this is ovarian cyst and you are able to see the classic there is appearance of the ovarian cyst in the form of fine fine moving echoes this appearance is called ground glass appearance so if you see here this entire is the ovary and you are able to see that there is a well defined hypoechoic oval cyst with classic ground glass appearance what is ground glass this is normal glass routine glass what we have which is clean transparent and this glass is the ground glass so this is how the ground glass appears the ground glass appearance on ultrasound is very classic for endometriosis or you can say very classic for chocolate cyst so now with all this Uh, things in our brain and all this basics let us begin with endometrioma so endometrioma are blood containing cysts now why are they blood containing because they contain endometrium which keeps on shedding within the endometrial cysts and within the ovaries they form and this leads to formation of endometriosis now endometriosis is defined as ectopic presence of functional endometrial tissue which is glandular tissue which responses to various hormonal changes in the body common sites are we have discussed and ovary being one of the most common site leading to the formation of chocolate cyst other being uterosacral ligament the serosal surface pouch of douglas even along the fallopian tube rectosigmoids now there are various theories being metastatic or metastatic implantation theory the retrograde menstruation theory we won't go into details because that is not the Uh, scope of this lecture now endometriomas basically 
it keeps on increasing with time because with repeated cycles the blood and blood products goes on accumulating there and with each cycle the symptoms keep on increasing patient will have increasing pain and it would be deep seated pain with each cycle there will be pain on the sides of ovaries now endometriosis is one of the common condition manifests as either peritoneal disease superficial peritonitis or ovarian disease which is called endometriomas or it can have deep pelvic type of endometriosis ovarian endometrioma they are typically unilocular cysts they show no color flow on doppler ground glass appearance may undergo decidualization in pregnancy should not be confused with malignancies and what can happen is suppose this is one ovary and this is another ovary there will be excessive fibrosis surrounding the ovary and ovary is keep on enlarging and with fibrotic change and there occurs a stage where ovaries might come together and this is classic kiss so this is called kissing ovaries so whenever there is bilateral chocolate cyst bilateral endometriomas you would get kissing ovaries where the both of these ovaries would come together now you know a small form of endometriosis which is adenomyosis which we discussed so more sometimes you find that endometriomas may be associated with adenomyosis so whenever you have adenomyosis you should always try to look for endometriomas or deep seating pelvic uh, uh, pelvic endometriomas pelvic endometriosis so whenever there is adenomyosis and associated endometriomas what can happen is there will be excessive amount of fibrosis and there can be adhesions between the uterus and the rectum or uterus and the bladder so in those situation there is a special test which is called slide test where you have to insert your probe and just manipulate your probe and you should look for whether the uterus is moving along with the rectum or not if it moves the if the uterus moves and the rectum is maintained in the same position that means there is no adhesion between the uterus and the rectum but suppose the uterus moves along with the rectum if uterus moves along with the rectum that means that the uterus is adherent to the rectum now so summarizing the endometriosis ultrasound findings homogeneous ground glass appearance of the cyst with varied level of ecogenicity sometimes punctate ecogenic foci may be seen now these are few important signs which may be seen multiplicity fluid fluid levels may be seen sometimes internal septa may be seen and waning and waxing size is very important because with each cycle there is bleed so the size of it would keep on increasing so follow up is a very very important method to diagnose endometriosis now especially during the time of menstrual cycle we have seen about kissing ovaries and we have seen that they do not exhibit any internal vascularity on color doppler study so now here are imaging here are few images again now interesting you see that this is ovary and inside the ovary you are able to see this well defined hypoechoic cyst with fine moving echoes so this is endometriotic cyst again here you are able to see this ovarian cyst with fine moving echoes okay and so these are multiple endometrioma this is one endometrioma this is another endometrioma so multiple endometriomas may also be there in a single ovary now here you see it's very interesting this is the right ovary of the patient you are able to see this ovarian some follicles and this is a big cyst inside the right ovary of course there is ground glass appearance ground glass appearance so this is chocolate cyst and this is an another left ovary and this is the ground glass appearance inside the 
left ovary. So chocolates. So endometrioma on one side that is right side, endometrioma on the left side. And yes, what do you see? They have come close to each other and they appear as if they are kissing each other. So this is called kissing ovary sign, one of the classic sign of endometriosis. So kissing ovary is one of the classic sign of endometriosis. Now we see one more image, yeah, this one. So again, this slide, I would, uh, so we have seen various signs, one is ground glass opacification, one is kissing ovary sign, we have seen that they can be multiple, we have shown you the multiplicity. Now in this you see, this is the ovarian cyst here. And within this cyst, this gives a classic ground glass appearance. So this is again a case of endometrioma. Now look here, this is ovary. And within the ovary, again, there is ground glass cyst, fine moving echoes, endometrioma. This is again a similar case, which is endometrioma. Now here you see a special sign. You can see that there is fluid fluid level. So that is basically hematocrit effect because of layering of the blood. So in this case, whenever you see layering of the blood, that means that the blood has settled down. So RBCs have settled down and separated from plasma. So that is one of the important signs that it is blood containing. Now there is always a confusion whether it's a hemorrhagic cyst versus endometrioma or chocolate cyst. Remember that chocolate cyst goes on increasing and cause increasing symptoms with each menstrual cycle. Whereas hemorrhagic cysts with subsequent follow up 6 to 12 weeks might subside. Lacy interreticular pattern or fishnet pattern is seen in case of hemorrhagic cyst. Whereas in case of chocolate cyst we see a classic ground glass pattern. So with this we finish here for endometriosis. Thank you.